Welcome back to Loon's Leaves, y'all. Today we're in the kitchen because today we're gonna be talking cactus hacks. All right, y'all, so today we're gonna be talking cactuses, um, some tips and tricks and hacks that you can use if you're repotting them or caring for them over a longer period of time. So I just recently purchased this cactus here for one reason and one reason only, and that's because my sister passed it in the store. I think it was Home Depot we were in. It was a Home Depot or a Lowe's, but I'm 90% sure it was a Home Depot. We passed it and she said it looks like Patrick Starr from SpongeBob, because um, he has this nice little point to him and then these two little arms, and he does kind of look like a starfish. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have him. However, when I purchased him, I broke one of my major rules when buying stores or when buying plants from a big box store, um, which is not purchasing any plants with any fake foliage. And although it's a little harder to tell on this cactus, these flowers here are not natural flowers to this cactus. They're pretty convincing because they have a more grassy like texture and they were probably once real blooms on some sort of plant that got harvested and dried to be glued onto this cactus. Now, I can indeed see the hot glue on this cactus. So they didn't do a very good job of trying to hide it. And right now, I'm gonna insert some photos that I've taken over the course of this year of different um, plants especially cactus that I've seen in big box stores where they have tried to glue on fake foliage. Specifically in this last year, I have seen it move from this type of dried flower harvested from another plant to these plastic flowers. I'm not sure why they think this looks good. I'm not really sure who would ever think this looks good or who would want to purchase a plant with this type of fake foliage on it. At least this fake foliage looks real and convincing. This plastic does not, especially this picture, which I'm gonna put up right now, where they literally glued this plastic flower like inches off of the actual plant itself, right onto the needles or the spines of the cactus. Like, who are you fooling? We can see the glue. Um, so I'm not really sure why big box stores have been doing this lately. I try to avoid purchasing cacti, especially because that seems to be the number one plant that they're gluing these fake flowers on. Um, so that way there's not a market for them. So if you can, please try to avoid purchasing plants with this so they don't continue to make them. I also want to um, ask you to avoid purchasing plants that are spray painted. So I'll insert another photo or a couple photos here. They've been doing this specifically to certain kinds of um, aloe and certain kinds of succulents, spray painting them. I'm not sure why, again, they're doing this. I do not think this personally looks at all convincing or aesthetically pleasing. So. In 2021, I'm going to try to avoid purchasing all plants like that. Um, I do occasionally get them as a gift, and that is why this guy is sitting here right now. This was a gift from my partner. He didn't realize it had a fake flower glued to it, and so I rehabbed this plant and got the fake flower off. But you can still indeed see some of the glue in its spines here. So these big clusters right around the spines, there's white ones. These ones are natural, these fuzzy looking ones. These are, I'm trying so hard not to touch them uh, with the spikes. These are clumps of glue that were once where the flower was held. So this cactus in particular, you can see the new growth on this cactus since I've had it in the last year because of its bright green um, kind of like center. That's where all the new growth stemmed from. So this used to be a perfect sphere. And as you can see now, he's elongated himself up and his spines have gone from being closer together to further apart, therefore pulling that glue where I took the flower off apart a little bit more. So the glue and hot gluing flowers onto these plants can actually damage them in the long run because if they stay on there, then it will prevent the plant from growing and it will prevent the plant from having that natural um, kind of separation of the spines as it gets taller or fatter or bigger, whatever you want to choose as your word for growth. Um, so today I will be rehabbing this plant, getting that flower off of him. He's also going to get repotted. And 
I wanted to show this guy, which is a um, cactus that we've had in our home for quite some time now. Uh, my partner purchased him in order to green up his apartment a little bit more um, when he was living on his own, so I would feel more at home, I guess. And so we've had this one for a couple of years. And some people do think that these are fake and or that the red part, pink part, or orange part, or yellow part, because they come in a variety of different colors, is indeed fake when it is not. So this guy only had the one big red bulb right here on him, and then these two... And these ones here have sprung up as we've had him. So they are not indeed fake. They do grow like that. Um, so just to show you the differences between real and fake um, coloring and foliage on some cactuses. So to get the flower off of the cactus. Also, by the way, I thought this was funny. This is called cactus with decorative flower. Enhanced with everlasting full flower to brighten your home set me in a sunny area and water when dry. Sorry, I have trouble reading small print. So they're not even trying to hide the fact that it's faux, um, which is kind of odd to me. So I have um, some stuff you use for a pedicure. I think that's what this is. I get this stuff as Christmas gifts and things like that from aunts and uncles and um, extended family and I keep it, not for pedicures, but for plant care. And then I also have some tweezers. So I am going to show you the first hack which is to use tongs for your cactus. So I'm gonna take off this strap here, which is what I use to bring the cactus home so I can get to it a little bit more easily. And I'm gonna just hold it kind of gently at the base. This is gonna keep it steady for me while I kind of pull this fake foliage off. So that popped off right away. You can see all the glue there. So indeed fake, I'm not ripping out a real flower off of this plant. However, sadly, they glued this guy pretty well. I don't even think, oh yeah, it is hot glue. It ripped out part of its spines. So that's sad. So I'm gonna do a little bit of scraping here to get a little bit more of this glue off, just to get all that off. We don't want it on there. Luckily it was on his back, but still. They, oh, keep bumping into this guy. They ripped off all its little spines. I probably could have been a little bit more gentle, but once they're, when they're really glued on there, it's so hard to tell how deep the glue goes and all things like that. So there is a bit of a chunk here still. I got it. Oh, I got a little chunk of glue off of his spine. So there we go. All right, so. Definitely use tools like this to get it off. It'll give you a little bit more precise angle to pull them from. And then be careful throwing that away or um, picking that up because it does have the spine still in there. So I'll be throwing that away in a little bit. Alrighty, now to talk about repotting. Move this guy aside. This is the pot that I'm gonna put him in. It's a little bit bigger than what I would normally put a cactus in, but it um, is the only thing I have on hand right now and I'd rather him be out of this little plastic pot. I guess I could stick him in there like that and just have it kind of as a dish um, to cover, like a cover pot or a cash pot as people call them. But I wanna get him out of here entirely. We don't want any remembrance of the fact that he had fake foliage or um, faux flowers on him. So I wanna get him out of here. He's been in here for quite some time and he looks like he might be a little root bound towards the bottom. I'm not exactly sure about that. But to get repotting for your cactuses, you're going to want to make sure that the soil has a lot of aeration that will be able to get in there. Um, they like dry soil. They like soil that has sand. It's kind of like that desert-like atmosphere. I do not have cactus soil on me. miracle Grow makes a wonderful cactus soil. Other companies make cactus soil, and basically all it is is potting soil mixed with sand. So you could make that on your own. A 50-50 slurry of that would probably work wonderfully. Or you can purchase it. It's not too expensive. I personally buy it in, uh, from miracle Grow just because uh, I don't want the hassle of having to purchase sand and keeping that in our small apartment. Um, I keep all of my potting stuff under this island that we have that has some built-in storage and we are v quickly running out of room. So I'm going to put some rocks in the bottom 
These are some smaller rocks that I purchased from the Target dollar section. They were $3 for this bag. Probably overpaid for them, but I liked the size of these. You can also purchase some rocks at the dollar store that are a little bit bigger in size and about the same amount as you would get here. So I'm gonna sprinkle some of these in the bottom. So that way it gets good water drainage in the bottom there. So I have it filled to about here just because it is a smaller sized cactus in this bigger container and I want to save on soil as well. But the rocks in the bottom are going to help the water drain out a little easier for this guy to keep him more dry and then he'll be able to suck that water back up because this doesn't have a drainage hole on it um, if he needs uh, more replenishment. So along with that, because I don't have sand, I am going to put a little bit of orchid bark in the soil. So I have some orchid bark here. Let me pull it. So again, miracle Grow orchid bark. These are a little bit chunky. Your pieces of bark, I'm going to sprinkle that in here and mix it a little bit with the potting soil that I have to kind of aerate the soil. I want the soil to be chunky. I want it to have some space. That's what the sand would be doing in the miracle Grow, So that way it can kind of, and this also um, has a little bit of sand within the soil as well. So I am going to put some potting soil in here now. Sorry if you heard my dog playing with his uh, toy just now. Sorry. It went under the couch. He's sad about it. So I'm going to mix together my potting soil with my tongs while they're here, might as well use them, and my orchid bark. Okay, so I just got his toy for him and I mixed together my soil and my orchid bark. So we have rocks, soil and orchid bark, um, regular potting soil, which should be all right. And I'm going to just, with my tongs again, because they're here, got to use them, I'm making a little indent for my cactus to go and then I will squeeze the pot that it came in a little bit. This helps loosen it up so that way you can pull your plant out a little bit easier and then with my tongs because we're not trying to get poked. Gloves, I've tried those in the past. They don't really work for me and I can see that I put a little too much soil in so I'm going to put him back, take some of that soil back out don't need that much okay and try again there we go that's probably gonna be better grab my cactus stick them in there I might take off a little bit of the soil at the bottom here there we go Expose, get off that little chunk of there all right, and then I'm just gonna carefully, I'm holding it by the soil, kind of break up the soil around it so that way we can plant this guy up. And I'm gonna add in some more soil. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog playing with this toy. Ironically, it's a cactus bark box toy. So, you having fun? Mm-hmm. So there we go, and I'm just going to use my tongs to move him around a bit and then place some more soil and get him nice and situated in his new little pot. There we go. Now he's looking good. Oh, my hands are so dirty. They're making the pot look nasty. So there we go. We got our new cactus in our pot. He is full flower free now. We took that off. And so, there are a couple of other things I want to show you that you can do with your cactuses, some more little tips and tricks. One of those things is using a old brush, um, like a toothbrush or a paintbrush, to get some of the soil off of your cactus. So with the repotting, I got a little bit of soil caught here in the spines or the spikes of the cactus. So I'm just going to use that, and this is an old toothbrush by the way. 
Use that to carefully brush them out. There's also a string of hot glue that we're stuck in there. Some more on this side, so I'm using that to brush off the cactus. I noticed this on one of my cactuses with a little bit more texture. He has a lot more uh, little spines, so I'm also gonna use that to brush off his spines gently and get some of that excessive soil out of there without taking off any new spines and things like that. So the brush method or toothbrush method, paintbrush method, whatever you wanna use, is a great way to solve that issue. Another thing that is good for cacti is to water them at the base of the um, plant itself. You don't really want to pour water over your cactus because none of this and none of your plants really, unless you're trying to rinse them off, I have a couple of monstera propagating here that are a little dusty and sometimes I'll top water them and kind of sprinkle it over to get some of that dust off and grime off. But cactuses don't really need that, so you don't need to pour it over the cactus. You should be watering at the base of the plant, and it can be a little bit tricky to do that precisely. So if you have some spines on your cactus that are harder for the soil to get out of, or you just want to more precisely water your plants, I have in the past used my water pick. So this is for dental hygiene. You fill this tank up with water. This is a battery operated one. I think they make ones that plug into the wall. And then you use this to like floss your teeth with the water that shoots out of the tip at a really high um, fast rate. But I have used my water pick not only for my teeth cleaning, um, but also to precisely water my plants and to spray out little bits of um, soil and things that get caught in there. So. I would say my top three tools for cacti are using the brush technique, using the water pick, which pretty much do the same things, except obviously the brush can't water your plants for you, and using tongs. I don't know why it took me so long to pick these up and use them for replanting cacti. I was using gloves and oven mitts and things like that for the longest time to pick up my cacti and put them in new pots or repot them from when I get them from the store, and it just hurts your hands so like and ruins your gloves ruins your oven mitts by getting little pokers and the um, spines and things stuck in them so you might as well use these so I hope that those tips and tricks helped you I hope that if you get gifted a cacti or you decide to purchase a cacti because you can't pass it up out of the true aesthetic for um, its shape like uh, Patrick Starr here that you now know how to remove the fake foliage and how damaging it can be to um, the plant itself. So if you see one you love and you want to save it, get that foliage off there, give it an opportunity to grow. Um, that's fantastic. And you can do that with some smaller tools like this. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped. And I will be posting pictures of Patrick himself on Instagram to keep you guys updated on his growth and things like that. He may or may not produce some more little arms. I really hope he kind of stays like this, but you know, it is what it is when it comes to uh, cacti and they're going their own way.